Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm a digital artist. Today's product is very similar to the last one except we're going to be creating a symmetrical image. If you didn't watch the last video, that's okay. I'm going to review everything plus more. Let's get started. First, I'm going to create a new document by clicking File, New. The size of your document can be whatever you want. The orientation is going to depend on which animal you pick. So for example, if you're doing an elephant, you're going to want to pick portrait because it's taller than it is wide. After I click OK, now in my layers panel, there will be a blank white background layer. To paste your reference, press Ctrl V on your keyboard. My reference image is too big for my canvas. Press Ctrl T to scale your image. Hold Shift so that your image doesn't distort. I try to center it as much as possible. We can focus on making sure it's centered later. Next, rename the layer by double clicking on the layer's name. I'm going to rename this layer image. To add a new layer, click the square with the dog-eared corner at the bottom of your layers panel. Now add points using the pen tool. Since we are making a symmetrical picture, we only need to make half the face. Start by creating a straight line down the center. Click a point at the top of the animal's head, hold shift, and click another point at the bottom of its head. If you need to move the line, hold Ctrl to bring up the Direct Selection tool, then click and drag it. To resume the path, you may need to click on the last point so that Photoshop knows where you want to continue from. Trace around the silhouette of the animal's head. To move any of the points, hold Ctrl and then click and drag. If you are moving the center line, don't forget to hold shift, otherwise your line won't be straight. Turn off your image layer to see what you have created so far. Make sure the foreground color is set to black. Before we stroke the path, we need to check the settings of our brush. The brush size I'm using is 25 pixels. You should be using a round hard brush or the hardness of your brush should be set to 100%. Now that we've confirmed our brush settings, we can stroke the path. First click the pen tool, then right click on the canvas and click stroke path. Make sure that your tool is set to brush and that simulate pressure is unchecked to get a consistent stroke. Now you can see the stroke that we've created. I'm going to rename this layer line. Next I'm going to continue the process for the eye, nose, ear, and markings. In the layers panel, I lower the opacity of my image because the paths were a little hard to see. Make sure to switch back to the line layer afterwards. After you've created lines around the anatomy, it's easier to break down the image into simpler shapes. Once we are done creating the lines, we can add color. Start by creating a new layer and renaming it Color 1, or whatever works best for you. 
I'm going to be using pink and blue, so I'm going to call this layer dark blue. Now switch back to your line layer and select the magic wand tool. All of the selections we are going to make are on the line layer. To select multiple shapes that you want the same color, hold shift. A plus sign will appear next to the cursor. Double click on the foreground color to pick a color, or you can choose a color in the color panel on the right. Next, select the paint bucket. It may be hiding under the gradient tool, so you may have to right click to open the drop down. We want to be selected on the color layer. Now you can fill in your selection. If all of your selections filled with the color, you did it correctly. If only one of your selections filled in, then you are on the wrong layer, probably the line layer. Now you just repeat the process. Start by creating a new layer. I'm going to call mine medium blue. Change the color, select the line layer, make your selections with the magic wand tool, switch back to the color layer and fill the color with the paint bucket tool. To change the layer's color, select the layer and press Ctrl U on your keyboard. This will bring up the Hue Saturation dialog box. Check Colorize, then move the sliders to pick a new variation. Once half of the portrait is done, we need to create the other half. Start by selecting the layers that you want to duplicate by holding shift. To select multiple consecutive layers, select the top one, in my case pink one, hold shift, and select the last layer that you want to be duplicated. Everything in between will select. Press Ctrl J to duplicate the layers. All of the highlighted layers will now say copy next to them. Next press Ctrl T to activate the free transform tool. Move the pivot from the center to the right side so that this becomes the new center. Right click and click flip horizontal. Use the arrow keys in the move tool to nudge the copied half over slightly so that the center line isn't doubled. To make sure that the whole image is centered, select all the layers that are visible and use the move tool. Guides should appear when you drag around the image to indicate that it is centered. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you liked this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Follow me on Instagram at sketchwithsteph and tag me. I hope you had fun creating with me. Stay tuned for the next video.